Okay then my friends, so now we know a little bit about what a reducer is, let's try making one for this application. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new folder called reducers and put my reducer inside here. Now you don't have to do this, again I'm just trying to keep things organized here. So let me now create a new file and I'm going to call this book reducer.js. So then inside this reducer what do we want to do? Well. We want to export something and that something is going to be a function. That's what a reducer is at the end of the day. It reduces all of our different functions that we have to manipulate the state. In our case, just these two and it reduces it into a single function. So let's say export and then const and it's going to be called book reducer. Set it equal to a function. It takes in those two parameters. Remember the state first, then the action and inside this reducer is where the magic happens. Okay, so remember, we need to check what the action type is because whenever we dispatch an action, it just goes straight to this reducer. We need to check the type of that action before we manipulate the state. So let's say switch. And then we want to look at the action dot type. Now that could be something like add book or remove book. Either way, we'll do a case for each one. So case, and that is gonna be add book and it's common practice just to keep these in capitals you could also store these in constants um, if you wished so you don't have to change them multiple times if you use them elsewhere but i'm just going to declare them there as is so inside this we're going to return a new value and this new value is going to be the new array of books so remember our books array is going to look something like this right and we want to take the current value of books which inside this reducer is represented by state these represent the books so what i could do is this and that's going to spread out all the different objects currently inside the books array so it grabs all of those and pops them inside this new array then we want to add a new one to this array so we've got different properties we've got the title and that is going to be on the action object that we pass in then we'll have a property called book which will be an object the new book we want to add then on that we'll have two properties a title and an author we want the title in this case next we want the author so that is going to be action dot book dot author and then finally we also need an id for this book and before we used uuid this library right here and we did that over here by invoking the function so let's cut this from here because we won't use this inside this file anymore and let's paste it over here inside this file instead like so okay so now we have that and we can call this function to generate a unique id so now we have our first case done and if we were to dispatch an action with this type add book and a new book object that we want to add to the state it will look here see this case and it will return this new data and this state will be returned then so that when we pass it down as a value over here then all the components consuming this context will see that updated state. All right, so that's the first case done. The second case is going to be remove book. So let's do that again in capitals, remove book. And inside here, we're going to return a new value again. And that new value is going to be a filtered array, much like we did over here when we said books.filter. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll just grab everything from here onwards and paste it over here. This time we want to say state.filter because remember state represents the books object. That's that piece of state. So we say state.filter and for each item in that array, we reference the item as book. If the book ID is not equal to the action Dot ID because when we send an action of this type remove book as the payload will send an ID property of the book we want to remove so now we'll only return true if those two IDs are not the same if they are the same then it's going to return false and remove that item from the array so it's now returning this new filtered array so that is pretty much the second one done now we also need a default catch-all so we'll just return state at the bottom here like so. And that is our reducer done. So we've created that reducer. It's not doing anything yet, but we've created it. And now over here, what we could do is import a new hook, which is going to be use reducer. And we're going to use that instead of use state now. So we can delete use state, get rid of that. 
and then over here we can say use reducer instead of use state. Now remember we pass in two parameters here. The first parameter is the reducer we want to use and that is going to be the book reducer we just created. So let's click that, auto imports it for me. And the second argument is going to be the initial value of this piece of state. Now I previously set it to this but what I'd like to do now is just set it to an empty array to begin with. So when you first load the application there's going to be no books on the reading list and then as we add them it will take those books. Okay now remember we get the books back but we also get a function called dispatch back right here. So we'll take that function as well and now we can remove these functions over here because we no longer use them inside this component. We use the book reducer instead and now what we need to do is remove these and instead pass down dispatch like that. Now if I save this then nothing's going to work in the application because we're trying to consume a context and use the different functions from that context in the different components. If we look in book form for example we're trying to get add book. Now that no longer exists in this context. We don't have that anymore because we just have the dispatch method. So what I'd like to do now is instead get the dispatch from here instead. And then when we go to add a new book instead of using add book we're going to use dispatch instead. Then in here we need to pass an action that we want to dispatch and that action is going to have a type. In this case we want to add a book so add book and then we also need to pass a payload that is going to be the book property which is an object again and we'll lower this onto the next line. We want the title which is just the title we get right here. Okay so we don't need to add title is title because they're both the same name. We we'll just do title and we also want the author so we'll pop that in there as well. So this component is now updated. We've got the dispatch method from the context and we're using that to add a book. Now let's do the same for removing one and that's in the book details. So instead of remove book now we want dispatch and then down here where we call remove book instead we want to dispatch an action. So let's delete this and instead say dispatch and place an action. The type is going to be remove underscore book and then the payload is going to be an ID which will be just the book ID. Remember we have access to the book as a prop. So now we're dispatching this type of action. And if we save this then hopefully this should now still all work. Let me just refresh and you can see there's no books to begin with. But if I say the way of Kings Brandon Sanderson and press enter then this still works. It gets added to the list and removing it also works as well. Awesome. So there we go my friends. That is how we can use reducers to reduce all of our different functions which interact with the state into one single function. And I think you'll find that this is much easier as you expand your application because now all your different state logic is in one place inside this book reducer and it makes this context file very lean as well because we don't have to do all of that manipulation right there. So this is almost done now. I just want to show you one more thing and that's how we can hook this application up to local storage in the browser so that when we refresh we don't lose any of that data. It gets it from local storage and then it can save it as well when we add new books. So I'll show you that in the next video.